Is the Apple Vision Pro tempting you? This product from a company called Xrail might just save you a bunch of money. Namaste, we're DHRME, Dire Human Resource Management Emergency. Now this is the Xrail Air 2 Pro. Let's just be clear, these are not immersive like the Apple Vision Pro. They're not VR like the Apple Vision Pro. You still have your peripheral vision. It's not $3,500 like the Apple Vision Pro. So yes, this is a completely different product and it has a bunch of uses. I've used it in five different ways for work and play. They just kind of blew my mind. So before we get to those five use cases, let's talk about what these glasses are. Like the Apple Vision Pro, you get one. 0.55 inch micro OLED panel in each eye that's bright and vivid. The Apple Vision Pro gives you 34 PPD pixels per degree, whereas the Xreal gives you a whopping 49. But remember that the Xreal has a limited area you're looking at, whereas the Vision Pro immerses you in the experience. The build on the Xreal is plastic and you get a hard carry case. Because of the nature of these glasses, I'd say this is more a sit down experience and I wouldn't be moving around too much in these because there's no pass through. The x works with a USB type C at the end of its left stock that also acts as a display port. So any device that can output HDMI over USB-C can use this. So plug into your phone, laptop or other devices and you're off to the races. All right, let's talk about use number one, DeX. As a certified Samsung head, I love that the Galaxy Fold 5 that I have here and many other models support DeX. DeX is a Windows or Chrome OS-like system that basically runs off of your phone. Plugging the x glasses into your DeX basically gives you a huge screen to work with. There are two ways in which I use DeX. One would be on a couch. For this, you can use the phone as a mouse pad and keyboard and just sit back, chill and watch some content. The second way is to be a bit more productive and use DeX at a desk. Yes, I got that right on the first time. Connect your Bluetooth keyboard and mouse and you've basically got a big screen to work with. You can work like this, not just at your desk, but also on the go. Uh, and by on the go, I mean stationary, on a train, on a plane, but not in the rain. These aren't waterproof. So basically, if I wanna get some work done, I have a super mobile setup anywhere I go. Dex rules, but man, Dex with Xreal is Dexy. It's, it's X-rated? Okay, moving on. Well, this one's pretty straightforward. Plug the other end of your USB-C into your laptop and boom, you've got a big screen you can work with. On the Mac, you can mirror your screen and you can do that on Windows too. But here's a trick that levels up your desktop game. You can install something called Nebula, which is available for Mac and Windows and this gives you up to three different screens to work with. Well, that's pretty insane. Working at home, you can just sit at your kitchen table and have a very clean setup while being more productive than even your usual office room with just one additional monitor. The killer feature that the Xreal Air 2 Pro has is that it has three tint levels. So you can make the optical part of this display translucent, which means it's very easy to glance at your keyboard or mouse. To do that, just toggle between the three dimming levels zero, 35% or 100% using the button. We almost never use 0% except in very low light situations. I think they've nailed the three settings though. Very useful. Oh, and there's a volume rocker next to it too. This volume rocker adjusts the sound of the open air speakers on the x -Reel, and they're pretty good on this version at least. Average bass and a bit bright, but I watched quite a bit of media and no complaints. Of course, you can use your Bluetooth devices if you want to. You'll also get microphones that you can use for audio calling. Probably not the best idea to video call considering people might judge you for wearing sunglasses indoors, but at least you don't look like a weird 3D render of yourself, <laughs> Apple personas. And that's another thing. Even if folks see you wearing these, they're more likely to think you're wearing regular sunglasses or some variant of it rather than the massive Apple Vision Pro or Meta Quest, which I kind of like. The fact that your peripheral vision isn't blocked doesn't hurt either. And then use number three, the Steam Deck. You know, I bought the Steam Deck used just about two days before the Steam Deck OLED was announced. That really annoyed the hell out of me. But you know what? Not anymore. To hell with OLED, I now have a Steam Deck Micro OLED thanks to the Xreal. Instead of a teensy weensy 7 inch screen, I now have a massive 130 inch screen equivalent with a 120Hz refresh rate. The best part of gaming on this is underrated. So on the Steam Deck, if you look down while gaming, you're going to start feeling it in your neck. And if you hold the console up to eye level, your arms are going to be tired. When you decouple the display from the controller, you can basically get the best of both worlds. 
Your hands can rest on your lap while you rest your neck on your couch. No more neck strain or arm soreness. And it absolutely works like a charm. What use number four? The other casting use cases. The fourth use case is a rather simple one, but works just as well and might actually be more useful to some of you than more niche cases we've talked about so far to just use the glasses as a screen with casting abilities. On the iPhone, I could just straight up mirror the screen to the glasses and that worked well enough. Watch content on a big ass screen, not as flexible as Dex, but what are you gonna do? I mean, it's an iPhone. AirPlay did work, so did mirroring. There's also an air casting option similar to what you can do on a TV that supports Google Chromecast. I'm not sure what the reason is exactly, but I was unable to cast Netflix or Disney Plus onto these glasses using the air casting method. Maybe it was a DRM thing, but YouTube works just fine. Simply hit that cast icon and select the extra glasses and voila, you have a big ass screen. Use number five is the beam. Now this fifth use necessitates buying additional hardware from Xreal and I wish we didn't have to, but it does enable some very cool features. So this is the Xreal beam and there are two things this does that I absolutely cannot do without. You see, I'm a very unstable person. At least my head is. Um, I notice that I keep moving my head a lot. You don't really realize this until you used AR or VR glasses. Every little movement affects what you're seeing and your brain just doesn't compensate for it as it does in real life. So the beam has this feature called body anchor mode and you get a big ass screen that you can change between 105 and 139 inches equivalent. And the body anchor mode, what it basically does is irrespective of whether you move or not, the screen stays put and to be honest, I love this feature. The beam also has a bunch of buttons. So if you move your head or just move to another place, you can reset the position of that screen with a button on the left side, which is very orange. So that's a bonus as well. So this is our first real AR set of glasses and there's a few things we noticed that might be interesting for you if you're considering buying these. Getting used to these glasses reminds me of getting used to wearing earbuds. You're basically teaching your body to do something new, so there will be some initial strain. We notice that the more often we use it, the less fatigued we feel. So just give it some time. Having said that, I don't know if I would want to work an eight hour day in these. I just like being able to not have anything on my face for those lengths of time. Every time I switch from these glasses to a monitor, the difference is huge. Even though the monitor is smaller, the experience is much cleaner and easier. Another thing I've noticed is the foveated rendering. Nice fancy term, but basically on a regular screen, all the pixels will light up and the resolution is equally you know, even. However, on AR displays, the edges are rendered in lower resolution to keep it less taxing for the processors and the batteries. The idea is that our eyes focus on the center of the screen and that part needs to be the sharpest. And every time you move to a corner, the eye detection also detects that and sharpens what you're looking at. It's strange, but the thing is that you can move your eyes without, you know, moving your head or this system knowing about it. It's like a feature of the human anatomy. So though I didn't notice it outright, I could kind of feel it that the edges are a bit, you know, lower resolution and not as sharp. And sometimes you could catch a glance at it and, you know, this is another reason actually I'd recommend getting the beam because the bigger virtual display size lets you see less of this phenomenon. The beam, however, has built in Netflix and Amazon Prime apps. But again, we couldn't log into either of them, even though we had the right password. Netflix gave us a password failed error while we kept failing Amazon's CAPTCHA. Definitely some DRM related stuff going on here. Also with the beam, you feel a bit more tethered down. You have one cable going from the glasses to the beam and another from the beam to whichever device you're using, if you're using it. Another point to keep in mind is that if you use these with a phone, with or without the beam, this thing is gonna chew through your phone's battery. The glasses themselves are powered by whatever they're plugged into. I watched three episodes of Griselda on Netflix last night and my Galaxy Z Fold 5 went from 85% to 14%. Now, this could just be Dex or something else, but the point here is that if you plan to use this while traveling, better make sure you have a battery pack for your mobile devices. And that's another thing. If you're plugged into the glasses, you won't have a port free to charge the phone. So either go wireless or charge wirelessly or buy two phones. Thankfully, you can get a battery pack from our sponsors. Nah, we're kidding. We bought these glasses with our own money. Not thanks to any sponsors, but you guys all our viewers, but also our members and patrons. 
Thank you so much for your support. It helps us stay independent and not just highlight the pros, but also the cons without worrying that we might piss off some brand. A special thanks to our Fuckman level supporters, Paula, Gamma Panda, and Hunter. You've been watching real X-rated content. And we've been DHRME. Dewey.